Hey, my name is Jeff back again, and this is interesting. A little story time briefly. Um, found a new place in town that uh, had some records. So here's the deal, and you might have one of these in your town because I I know they're pretty common, but uh, this is only the only one I know of in our town. There's a store, I should say, it's more like it's a space, and then people rent out booths. Now, I've seen this type of setup before in other areas, but they tend to be more like, you know, antique stores where people sell their wares. The antique mall in our neighborhood is the same way. Everybody rents a booth and everything, you know, so you'll find records throughout. This particular place is different. We've been there before. And it's all, it's almost like a giant Etsy or eBay store because everybody, it's like handcrafted stuff. So everybody buys a booth and they have handcrafted stuff. It can be edibles you know, food type products. It can be wood things. They sell socks. I mean, everything. And so we go there occasionally. So it, I, it has been a few months since I've been there, but yesterday my wife goes out and she swings by there. And then, so she texts me and she says, the place has like greatly expanded. You know, they're in a shopping center. I'm assuming they took over extra space. She said, this place is so much bigger than it used to be. And then she sends me a picture. She said, look what I found. And she sends me this picture. And she's like, there's a vendor here that sells records. So I'm like, oh, wow. And um, so I'm looking at the picture. And I'm so, so I just asked her, you know, give me some prices on some of that stuff, like, you know, the Led Zeppelin and stuff, just to kind of get a feel for what kind of prices they had. Most of the stuff was listed as new and sealed. So the prices were what you would expect to find. Uh, maybe a little higher on some of the things. But she went ahead and said, okay, we're look." So she started looking through them. And rather than doing a video thing, she just was talking me through it. And so she's scanning through. Um, and I'd like to go back. I'm going to go back. She'll take me back uh, at some point because I'm sure there's some bands in there that maybe she didn't catch that were maybe significant. But she caught the bigger one. So she's like, hey, do you, do you have this Keel album? I'm like, yeah, I do. So, I mean, they had some metal. Do you, uh, Quiet Riot. Yeah, no, I got that. Um, do you have... And she's finding this stuff and she's finding that stuff and, um, you know, some pretty decent stuff. And she found like a copy of Rush Exit Stage Left and she sent me a picture of the vinyl. She said it looks kind of like there's like water spots or something on it on all the sides. I couldn't quite make it out from the picture. It almost looked like dust. She said it's kind of weird. So I'll go back and look at it. But the price was right. And it just it had some stuff on it that we couldn't determine and she, she couldn't, they didn't feel anything, but, you know, wanted to get a second view on that. It's things like that. So she's looking. Um, and they were, you know, they they had some Skinner that I wanted. But, you know, some of the price, I'm like, ah, I don't really want to pay that much. I'm comparing online. But there were a couple things. And I said, yeah, that'd be great. So she said, UFO. I said, yes, I like UFO. So she's looking. And they had Phenomena. And I'm like, I don't have that. That's one of the only Michael Shanker ones that I don't have. I think. There's one more now that I don't have. I thought this was completing it, but there is one more. And I'm like, okay, is it a, you know, repress or whatever? And she said, well, it's got a mother's record sticker on it for $4.98. I'm like, yeah, can we buy it for $4.98? No, it was not $4.98. Um, this one was actually a little pricier than I probably wanted to buy, but it, it's still in the shrink. It is one of the original presses. So, and it looked great. I brought it home played it it sounded great i turned around and polished it with the soft rag got all the slight fingerprints that it had on it so it looks like new and i played it again and it still it sounds crisp and brand new so i looked at it online and i'm like okay with shipping the price is not much of a drastic difference so let you know i said that might be interesting i didn't actually tell her to get it uh, on this one because I, I was still kind of iffy on the price but so what she did is there was one or two that I said, yeah, get those. And then she comes home and she surprises me with the ones that she did get. And she, she, and she paid for it out of this other account that we got. So she was like, Merry Christmas, past birth. I don't know. She just like, here. So she treated me. And so she grabbed this. And I'm very appreciative because I didn't have it. And like I said, it is a great album. This is, you know, rock bottom and... And uh, and some of those big hits. This is, but this was the, the, the first Michael Shanker album they did. So I don't have the first three albums, the two first two albums and the live album. Um, I'll pick them up one day. I know they've been reissued, but if I ever find them in the wild, I'll probably consider them. But this is where it all started for the most part. Great stuff. 
And then she said, oh, look, another UFO, Strangers in the Night. And I'm like, is it the reissue, which I've had on my wish list since it came out a couple years ago, or is it the other? It turned out it is one of the original pressings. It's just in that barcode era uh, of the early 80s, I guess, when barcode started. Uh, and she said, wow, it looks like it hasn't even been played. And, you know, even the cover, I, I'm like, I was impressed. The cover looks really fairly new. But it is, you know, an original pressing. Of, I, I assume I'd have to go back. I'm not sure if it's a, uh, it's on Chrysalis. It's, you know, I don't know if it's a repress of the original. It's probably maybe not like a first press or anything. But the price was right. The price was actually decent on this. I'm like, I, every time I see that album, it's, it's, it's a bit more than that. So I'm surprised that this one was uh, in that price range. This is one of the ones I said, yeah, if you could get that one, that one would be great. And again, I got it home, had minor, you know, foot fingerprint type things. Just barely little dusty stuff. Polished it up. <sighs> Looks brand new. Just, you know, sounds great. So this was a great UFO day because that this one, you know, everybody says, that's eh, the best album, best live album. Um, I have the digital version. I have the CD version. I have the expanded version where they released all of the different concerts that compiled to this. But I never have found a decent copy of the vinyl. And honestly, I'm leaning more nowadays to finding OG copies rather than getting all the remasters. But honestly, it's whichever comes first at the best price. If I found the remaster and it was on Amazon for $15, I'd pounce on it. You know, If it was an original copy I'd and it was in a decent price, like in this case, I'll pounce on it. I'm not so stuck on it. Unless the remastered newer versions, you know, a lot of them like... The, the other Shanker albums they've released usually have a second album of live stuff. Um, so that's kind of nice. And I do have Force It on the, the other. But all of the other Shanker albums from the first few Shanker years of UFO are OG presses except Force It. This is when she said, uh, do you have this one? And I'm like, no, I don't. And she goes, uh, is it a good one? I'm like, yeah. That's the one that's got carry on my wayward son, dust in the wind, all that. Oh, I told her, you know, this one's actually the cheapest one in the set. And I'm like, uh, you know, I probably still could find that for a couple of dollars cheaper. I said, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. It's a, it'd be nice. Well, anyway, this is one of the ones she's like, surprised me with. She says, no, she wanted this. She's like, no, you've got to have this. She said it looked brand new and unplayed. And I got it home, minor, minor dust and fingerprints. And again, I polished it up and I played it with the fingerprints or whatever when I pulled it out of the box. It sounded perfect. I polished it up. I'm sure it sounds even better. Just love this album. This was actually probably one of the only Kansas albums I had back in the day. This and Point of No Return were very common and in the household where I lived. But I remember this one particularly, probably my brother had it. And I do remember listening to this one uh, as a youth when it came out. And so... I was really thrilled to get this. It is, like I said, it's an OG copy. It's got the insert. Everything inside is fine. So this one was very reasonable. So I grabbed that. And then this is the one she's like, do you have this? I'm like, no, I don't, but whatever. And then she pulled it out and saw the color. And I'm like, all right, that's a, a recent press. And that's the Walmart exclusive. We sold our soul for rock and roll. So that's the Walmart green version. Recently came out, actually in 2021. The price was a little hefty on this, but when I looked it up on Amazon, it was even more expensive. And it might be because it is, I don't even know who's selling it on, on, on Amazon since it's a Walmart exclusive. But the uh, price has went up. It's 2021, like I believe is the, is the pressing. And so that price has kind of went up. And I thought, well, you know, it might be okay to get because obviously it's going to be fairly new. And she said it looks brand new. She loved the color. She says, oh, that is such a pretty green. So she determined she was getting this one whether I wanted to or not. And so she brought this home as, a, as it's kind of part of the surprise too. My my thoughts were I was probably going to get the UFO and maybe this. But she's like, yeah. So she threw this in the basket. And, yeah, and you know, it, it's it's fairly new. And uh, it obviously in great shape. So I was thrilled. So yeah, so I need, I'm going to go back to that place. Maybe I'll get a chance, uh, you know, in the next week or so to get over there and dig a little deeper, see if there was any obscure stuff. But she was ca calling out a lot of the names that she knew looked like they would have been in my, you know, my wheelhouse of music. So anyway, appreciative wives are great. My wife is great looking out for me and she's helping to dig and she can catch things and 
anyway, it was a great day and she brought me home some fun stuff. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.